Welcome back guys to another book video. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read during the summer, which are honestly not a lot, but for the season that I'm in, it worked. I think I read more than I thought I was going to be able to read with a newborn in the mix. And I think part of the summer I was like on bed rest, just very tired all the time, very exhausted. And I was homeschooling, so I did not think I was gonna be able to read as much as I read, but audiobooks actually helped me out a lot this summer. So we are gonna go ahead and just start talking about all the books that I read and what I rated them. So I'm going to talk about these two books together because they do go together. Uh, but the first ones that I read was It Ends With Us and then It Starts With Us. And I really, really did love this book series. I rated both of them a five according to my bookstagram account they were both rated a five but like in my heart in the depth of my heart like in the very very deepness of my heart this one is a five this one is more of a like 4.75 around there just because i feel like with this one yes it's heavy on you know the topic that it's about domestic violence it's a very heavy book but I feel like I was just so much more invested in this book. And I think because of the domestic violence trope, not that I enjoyed it, but just that there was so much to take in. And I was fully invested in the fact that Lily loved this man that obviously was not good for her. And so I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I cried towards the end of this book. I cried. I was so angry. I was very, very irritated with Ryle. I'm like... Dude, get it together. Like, you have a woman, a beautiful woman who loves you, who is trying to, like, just look the other way, and he just never got it together. It was a very, very heavy book, I will say. But I really did love it. Just everything about it I loved. And then the second one, I loved it, but I did not love, love it, if that makes sense. <laughs> I just wanted more from Lily and Atlas's story. Like... I know we get to know more about Atlas in this one, which I did really enjoy, but I just like for their love, their relationship, I just wanted more. It was, they started off very slowly. I love the ending, I will say, but I just feel like for people, for these two people who were absolutely in love with each other since their teenage years, I just, I wanted more from their story. I feel like I feel like Colleen Hoover could have done a little bit better with this one, honestly. But either way, they I rated both of them a five, so that says a lot. The next one was an audiobook um, that I listened to, and it was I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelo. I'll post a picture up here. And this is like her autobiography, memoir book. Sorry if you guys hear noise. My kids are upstairs playing. But this was her uh, memoir autobiography, and I really did enjoy it. She reads the book herself she is the narrator very tough topics to listen to as well this book does mention rape and i remember i was listening to this in the car with my daughters because at first i didn't think it was going to honestly say anything that was not appropriate for a kid's ear but as it started like building up i'm glad she built up the story the way she did because I was able to figure out, okay, this is going a way that I don't want the girls to hear. So I ended up just turning it off. So I will say this book, you do have to read or listen to on your own, not around children, just because it touch, it does touch the topic about rape and just other topics. Um, but that was one of the main ones that really stood out to me. But I will say she reads this book, she narrates this book very poetically. Like it's not poetry, but I don't know if maybe it's just the fact that I know that she does poetry, she did poetry, and I just heard her in a poetic way. I don't know, but she narrated the whole story in a very poetic way, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I rated this one a four star. Next is two, I'm gonna do these two together as well. Um, these two books, The Housemaid series by Frieda McFadden. She, she has literally become one of my favorite authors now. Like. I had heard of her, never picked up a book, but I was like, this one like is so popular. Everyone's reading it. Let me see what the hype is about. And I loved it. 
I rated the first one a five star. It was just like the first page, just like, just grabbed me, sucked me in. And I read this book, I wanna say in like almost, well, like a day and a half, maybe two days, three days at most, I don't remember exactly, but I read this one fairly quickly for a person who had a newborn baby <laughs> in the mix. But I love this one, I rated this one a five. The second one was good, but not as good as the first one. I believe I rated this one, did I rate this one a five or a four? Hold on, let me check. Okay, so I rated this one a 4.5. And like I said, it's not as good as the first one. I feel like the first one was the best in the series. I have not read the third one, but I'm actually very, very hesitant on reading it because just like, she went, ooh, and then came all the way down. So, I don't know. I mean, if you've read the third one, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I'm hesitant on reading it. Like I said, this one was a 4.5. It just... It didn't suck me in as much, and I feel like now that, what's her name? I forget her name. What is her name? Starts with an M. Nina, or N, Nina. Okay, now that Nina is like living differently in a way, like what happens in the story is not to her. So now in this one, she's helping someone else even though here she kind of helped someone else, but she ended up also getting involved. And in this one, I just feel like, this kind of ended up being like a murder mystery, kind of. And the murderer got away with murder. But I don't, I just, I wasn't as invested in this one as this one. It was still really good. But this one, like I just indulged completely in. So if you read the third one, let me know. In the comments what you think should i read it should i not should i give it a chance i mean i was thinking maybe if i do end up reading it i'll probably just get it from the library instead of buying the book but at the same time i just i can't have a series sitting on my bookshelf incomplete so i'm thinking of just buying the book and reading it and if i don't like it well too bad okay i need a sip of coffee and i gotta look at the next book i'm trying to go in order guys All right, the next book was actually a DNF, and it was The Power of a Praying Wife. And I read, I want to say I read about half of the book, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to DNF it. Because it was taking me really long to read, and I just, I was not very invested, very interested in the book. It's not to say that she did not have good points, because I did do some highlighting in the book. I took some notes, but I feel like it was just very surface level. Like, she had the prompts, and then okay we're praying for our husband's finances okay but it was just very very like surface level i feel like she did use scripture but i'm like you could have gone so much more in depth on these topics and why you should be praying for them how you should be praying for them and it just it did not give me more it did not give me what i wanted out of it so when i realized i finally like you know something rang in my head and was like okay said yeah enough i was like I gotta put it down. I, I really wish she could have just gotten more deeper into the conversations. Like the chapters were super short, maybe one or two pages long. And then she would give you some like uh, scriptures to like, to read off or to pray with. And then she would also give you a prayer. So she would like write out a prayer. And it's good. I'm not saying that the book was bad, but I just... I wanted more, I did not get more, so I did DNF it about halfway through. And I, I honestly don't think I'll be reading another Stormy Omar, Martin, Martian? Another one of her books, honestly. Okay, the next one was also an audiobook. And it is Solito by Javier Zamora. And I rated this one a five star. If I could rate it more, I honestly would. And this is a nonfiction memoir about Javier's life, about him crossing over from El Salvador to the United States to meet up with his parents again. Throughout this entire story, he is, what, eight or nine years old, and he talks about everything that he encountered crossing over. So he went from country to country. And it's just, it's a story that I want to say I, I related to, not in the sense that, I mean, I'm Puerto Rican, my family is from Puerto Rico, but my husband, um, his mom's family is from El Salvador, and then his dad's family is from Honduras. 
So I related in a way where I understood what he was feeling and I could now in a way kind of relate to my in-laws a little bit more because I know, I don't want to say they went through the same thing, obviously, but I just, I got a glimpse of what they went through just to get here to make a better life and obviously to give me my husband because if it wasn't for them coming, I would not have my husband, but that's another topic. <laughs> but I absolutely love this story. Javier narrates the book himself. He is heavy on the Salvadorian accent, but it was really, really good. I cried, I laughed, especially when I heard like certain words that he would use that my, I heard my in-laws use. So I don't know, it was, it was a really good book. I absolutely loved it. And if I'm honest, probably one of my favorite books of the year so far. Okay, next is another audiobook. College Girl Missing by Sean Cohen. And he is actually a reporter about this story. This is actually a true story and it happened here in Indiana about an hour and a half from where I live. This story takes place in Bloomington. It's a true story where a college girl goes missing and apparently nobody knows what happens to her, but there were a lot of people that played a part. <clears throat> Excuse me. There were a lot of people that played a part in her disappearance, not so much that they made her disappear or that they did something, but just there's pieces of the puzzle that does not add up because there's people that saw her last, like she was in somebody's apartment and then she left that apartment and then from there she disappeared. So did she really leave the apartment? There's just so many details that this reporter who reported on the story when it happened back in, I believe this was 2011, um, and then things he found out after the fact because he kept digging in. He kept digging into the story trying to figure out what happened to this girl. But it really kind of like, it jogged my memory and it made me remember when this was on the news back in 2011 when I first moved to Indiana. So really good story. Um, <clears throat> not story, but you get what I'm saying. It's a good book. I rated it a four star because it was super short, super can't even talk now. It was super short. And obviously, there's really no end to the story. So I couldn't rate it a five. <laughs> okay. The next one, and I think this one might be the last one for my summer reads. The last one is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This is the second book I read from Abby Jimenez and i'm in love with her writing i love 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 the first one i read was yours truly and i fell in love with her writing then this is the second one i have to get the first one in the series i i read it out of order because i read the second one and then this one this is the what what's the series called i forgot what it's called i don't remember but it's part of like a three-part series but honestly in my opinion after reading the first one and the, or the second one and this one you can read them as standalones. I guess the reason why they're part of this series is because you have um, some of the same characters. They show up in the books, but it's not that they're like main characters. They're just one of those background characters that pops up out of nowhere and you know that you have a conversation with them, but then you don't really discuss them afterwards. So that's why it's part of a series, but you can honestly read these as standalones. So I do have to read the first one, but this one I loved the mental health trope, um, the fact that we have also um, child abandonment, this girl still trying to like, just give her mom the benefit of the doubt, regardless of what happened, regardless of the fact that her mom pretty much abandoned her as a child. And then we have the, what's his name? Oh my God. So we have Emma and then Justin. Justin, whose mom ends up going to prison for something that she did after her husband's death. And it's just like, these two people have so much going on in their lives. And you know, it's a fake dating thing. They meet online on a Reddit thread and they decide, hey, let's let's fake date for the summer and see what happens. But it was not that they, end, they wanted to end up being together. They wanted to find their soulmate after the fact, but I don't even know why I bother. I mean, they, they, you know how this book is gonna end, okay? Let's, just, I'm just gonna zip it. You know how it's gonna end. I absolutely love it. There's nothing more to say. I love Abby Jimenez, love her writing. 
love her books and this one was a five star and another one of my 2024 favorites so in total i read let's see how many books i read this summer i got one two three four five and then i have six seven eight eight books that i read one dnf so nine books in total that i went through this summer right yeah nine books that i went through this summer i think i did really good this summer reading again i read more than what i thought i was gonna read so that's a good thing but here is my lovely stack of physical books I'm trying to pick them up so i'm gonna use this as a thumbnail which is why i kind of like flip some of the books over but yeah so Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned because I am trying to create more content for this channel. It's just, it's been a little hectic. I have a newborn. He's going to be two months uh, on the 29th of September. Today is the 26th when I filmed this. Um, so it's been hectic. He is breastfed. So when you have a breastfed baby, they end to be a little, they end up or tend to be more clingy so <laughs> this is the clingiest baby that i've had right now he's sleeping so i literally took advantage like i got ready i'm not like you know completely ready for the day this is my i'm gonna be home all day look but <laughs> i said i gotta get this video done so but the next video that i do plan on filming is my fall tbr because i'm not gonna be doing uh monthly tbrs anymore because i don't end up sticking to them and honestly i just feel so much pressure when i'm doing monthly tbrs so i'm doing seasonal tbrs and then wrap-ups and then if i can get a video somewhere in between then i'm gonna do it i am working on bookmas vlogmas which i shared in my community tab i shared a post because i'm trying to get ideas i have already a list of ideas that i want to do for bookmas or vlogmas for this channel but just so that you guys are aware because i did also share it on um the community tab here because i think i did a poll where i want to share more journal stuff more planner stuff because this channel i want to try to kind of like shift a little bit i still want to keep it prior in the priority books because the channel is called books y cafe con leche but this is kind of like my hobby channel right this is my baby my main channel life with the candles is more family oriented um family vlogs homeschool travel all that jazz but this one i want to share more about what i like to do and i am huge on journaling i'm obsessed with planners and i just want to bring that to this channel i'm not going to all of a sudden convert this channel to nothing but journals and planners because it's still going to be primarily a book channel but i do want to bring in just extra stuff that i really do enjoy that make me me and i mean notebooks planners they're books in my eyes they're books so <laughs> books y cafe con leche anyways thank you guys for watching thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys in the next one